Hello everyone, uh, here we are again. Uh, this time we're interviewing Gary Stephenson, the Chief Executive Officer of Restorative Solutions CIC. Um, so, hello Gary, how are you? Hi, fine. Hello everybody. Uh, thank you for participating in this. I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions for our members. Uh, the first one it was like, um, how did you get into RJ? Because you used to be a police uh, officer. Yeah, I spent probably 28 years of my service involved in um, plain clothes policing, counter-terrorism, intelligence, um, covert policing. And the last three years of my service, I was promoted to the official commander where I went back uh, to an area to police, police an area. And um, I, I increasingly found that the, the staff I was working with, the, the, the cops on the ground, were very good at talking about problem solving. But when I actually asked them, how they solve the problem, what methodology, what tool they had, what they were equipped with, they, they, it just fell a little bit silent and a little bit blank. So by total coincidence, I, um, I went to a, a conference on restorative justice, which Charles Pollard was, was hosting. Um, I sat and listened to his presentation, knew very little, if anything, about restorative justice, and it was a classic light bulb moment. I thought, I can take this. You had an epiphany. And an absolute epiphany. I can take this and we can do something with it. And Charles at that time was working very much the high-end offenders, and I was involved in neighbourhood policing. I thought we can take this and resolve local issues with it. So I, I, I then contacted Charles, did a little bit of training, and it just took off from there, really. The more I got to know it, the more I saw its potential, really. Oh, that's very interesting. Of course, you, you are now the Chief Executive of uh, Solutions, where uh, Charles is the, uh, the chairman as well. So you're still working together to this day. Um, from that position, what do you think is the key attribute to your organisation? What is uh, what can you contribute to the community, to the sector? Well, I think what, what Charles and Nigel have done with restorative um, justice, restorative approaches, restorative practice, whichever whichever title we choose to use at, at whatever given time is, they've introduced uh, innovation with it, um, and not only with that innovation, they've also made it more accessible. So we've trained lots of people who previously. Uh, we're not full-time restorative justice practitioners, so they have a day job and we've equipped them with, with, with new skills. So, so, so very much that, that innovation is, uh, is very important um, for us in terms of how we use, how we use restorative justice in, in any context and, and in any setting. And what, what we do say is that when you actually equip a practitioner with the restorative justice skills, the only thing that limits them is their imagination. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's our concept, that's our, our philosophy. We'll give you the skills, now you go away and work and think and act and behave restoratively. Oh, that's very interesting. Um, so, thinking about the sector as a whole at the moment, uh, particularly in the UK, what do you see as the main challenges going forward? I think the biggest challenge is that we still have a, a patchwork quilt of uh, capability up and down the country uh, in terms of victims and offenders, whether you have an opportunity to access restorative justice is still very much a postcode uh, lottery. Unfortunately, the funding has gone out to 41, 42 PCCs up and down the country who all take a different view and a different perspective. So the the, the notion of having a national model is um, is is not really going to be achieved in in, in this this sort of time frame as it stands uh, at the minute. What is important is that even though we're not going to have a national model. If somebody is accessing restorative justice, it's delivered to the same standards and qualities that are, that are required nationally, and, and, and that is important. But the real, real sad fact of the matter is that um, accessibility of, of restorative justice is just not going to be there. And we have uh, PCC elections coming up next year, isn't it? Uh, so it doesn't, doesn't look like that's going to change in the near future. Well, the, the PCCs are yeah, due for a re-election next year in May. We could end up with a new cohort of, of PCCs, so again, the whole thing may just may just change again. And we'll have a five-year uh, tenure of government at the minute, so so that's okay. And we've got cross-party support for restorative justice. It's um, important we, because of continuity once uh, if we have an election here. Uh, absolutely, cross-party support is so critical. So we'll, we'll have consistency in terms of government, um, but again, we may get the consistency in terms of how the funding that is still available uh, is spent. And again. Funding, and my understanding is, you know, probably due to finish in, in, in the nearest future that the uh, MOJ have actually given to PCC. So it's how sustainable that is. So sustainability and accessibility are the real big issues for me. Okay, well, thank you, Richard. I think that's plenty to think about, folks. Uh, so 
Thank you so much for your time, Boris and your questions. Thank you. Thank you.